Hi, it's uh, Jim Bamburek. I'm uh, with the Manitoba Geological Survey. I'm standing on the edge of a quarry uh, that is near the southern end of Hecla Provincial Park or Hecla Grindstone Provincial Park and uh, the south end of the actual island uh, named Hecla Island. Uh, at this uh, particular uh, point, uh, we're standing on a uh, rock uh, that is of the uh, doghead member of the Red River Formation. And directly below my feet here, just below this particular rock, is a, a fossil. Uh, this is a fossil of a, uh, a nautiloid uh, that uh, uh, lived many, many uh, millions of years ago, close to uh, 550 million years ago. Uh, used to swim and uh, live uh, in the ocean uh, when Manitoba was very close to the equator. Uh, this terrain, this carbonate rock was deposited uh, possibly near coral reefs uh, that were uh, again situated uh, near the equator and uh, you would have uh, the typical lime mud uh, bottom of the ocean and uh, then these creatures when they died off would have uh, been uh, preserved in terms of their uh, fossil uh, material and you can see the uh, multiple uh, columns of uh, sediment in through here it's it's a fossil you don't see any real preservation of the interior of that uh, creature uh, as such, but it is a mold of uh, that inside. It would have been like a, a, a skeleton uh, preservation. And this could have been 20 or 30 feet long uh, th th as such, uh, this uh, nautiloid that uh, uh, lived, like I said, uh, uh, close to a half a billion years ago. This limestone, dolomitic limestone has got uh, various features on each particular piece of rock and these darker parts are the dolomite and the lighter parts are the uh, limestone so it is a, uh, a model dolomitic limestone very similar to the Tyndall stone which is technically higher in the section so if we uh, can imagine uh, about uh, 300 meters above us uh, would be the uh, same beds of the Selkirk member being deposited in that uh, tropical sea uh, near the equator. On this part of uh, the outcrop adjacent to the quarry and behind me, we can actually see glacial striae that are uh, preserved in the uh, surface of the uh, rock. We refer to this surface as a uh, boulder pavement, uh, a pavement as in terms of concrete, but this is not concrete. This is in mother nature at its finest. And uh, this is the way that the uh, traveling, the movement of the glaciers over the surface end up gouging and making striations in the rock surface. So if you pick up a, a stone from the uh, ground here, and uh, you can imagine the glacier has uh, a piece of rock in the bottom of the ice. And as it moves forward, it digs into the rock. So trying to follow the direction here and scratching uh, in the modern day context, uh, th these actual pieces of rock have caused these gouges into the surface of the rock. My hammer handle, it parallels these striations that uh, have been left by these multiple pebbles and uh, little fragments that uh, were uh, gouged into this uh, bedrock pavement. This again is a dolomitic limestone. Uh, it is relatively soft, uh, about the hardness of uh, three or so uh, for calcite. And uh, that is the predominant mineral in here. There is some uh, dolomite or uh, calcium magnesium carbonate as well as the calcium carbonate. The hardness is about the same between the two. And as a result, any harder boulders like lime, uh, uh, granite uh, uh, type of uh, material, uh, granitic rock, uh, diorite, uh, gabbro, and uh, the, um, the whole host of igneous uh, and metamorphic rocks from northern Canada, 
being dragged over the top of the surface and pushed into it uh, produced these uh, striations. But there is something else here on the surface that is of interest and it's the vegetation that is lined up along here and it cuts across the pattern of the um, of, uh, the striations that are here and there's another bit of a pattern of plants right in through here and this is quite diagnostic of faults uh, or major joint planes in the actual rock and what happens is the plants will occupy uh, the fractures and cracks because that's where the water will tend to collect is in these cracks so the plants will grow here you tend to lose it because uh, it looks like it was fairly dry. Uh, there are uh, studies that are done in the rock and uh, what you can do is attribute certain major uh, movements in the subsurface to uh, fracture patterns. And you can plot these on uh, the stereographic projections and you can come to conclusion as to where these particular uh, forces were active, uh, where they radiate out from. And uh, in the Western Canada sedimentary basin, there are some major fracture patterns uh, that can be mapped across the whole of Western Canada. So uh, a lot of this was related to uh, all sorts of tectonic forces that happened uh, uh, in a long time ago and also uh, things that may have been reactivated more recently. And it causes these particular fracture patterns uh, in the uh, surface like this. But you normally can't see it where there's vegetation like there is uh, over uh, outside the uh, quarry area you don't get a chance in most cases to see the fractures that have developed. So between striations on the surface here, major fractures, uh, there's a lot of things that have happened in uh, this part of Manitoba.